Okay, let's get started. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar on overcoming latency for distributed DevOps team. Hope you all are staying safe and sane during this pandemic. A little disclaimer before we start. What this slide basically says is everything in this presentation is private and confidential. The deck should not be shared without the consent from JFRA. This presentation is for marketing purpose only, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you have any questions, please do reach out to us. Who am I? My name is Narsima Pai, and I work with JFrog as a product manager. As part of the product team, I work closely with all the functions within JFrog while collaborating with customers to gather and analyze customer needs, requirements, and feedback. I am also involved in data-driven prioritization of features that impact the product roadmap. As a subject matter expert for Artifactory, I also provide product briefs to both internal and external stakeholders. The agenda for today's webinar includes a brief introduction to JFrog, understanding how software is taking over the world, JFrog's unified approach and intro to platform, distributed teams and resources, accessing, addressing the concern of keeping resources in sync via multi-site setup and replication, use of a CDN-based artifactory solution, secure distribution of artifacts for production, followed by a quick demo on replication and distribution. For audio quality purposes, all the audio lines will be muted. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to use the questions tab. I will answer them at the end of this webinar. I'm hoping that all of you know what JFrog is, but briefly, JFrog was founded in 2008. We have approximately 6,500 paying customers. 65% of the Fortune 500 companies use JFrog products. We are a DevOps unicorn and community champions. Our products are driven by community feedback. JFrog's mission is to power all software updates in the world. We strongly believe in the concept of liquid software where the updates should flow freely and continuously like water flowing through the pipes. In today's world, every company is a software company, be it healthcare, transportation, energy, everyone needs software. The software kind of eats the world. With that being said, artifacts are the building blocks of software. And these artifacts can belong to different technologies such as Java, Node.js, .NET, C, C++, Golang, Python, etc. Streamlining the flow and supply chain of artifacts is essential to increase software release velocity and quality, which is in accordance with the DevOps principle. So how did JFrog go about it? JFrog basically adopted the unified approach where we provide different services all under a single UI. We have built an end-to-end -end platform which not only allows you to manage binaries, but also distribute them to production sites with ease. This platform gives you the complete visibility, governance, and control across pipelines from Git to Kubernetes and everything in between. The platform also provides the continuous security, which includes vulnerability scanning and open source license compliance. The solution scales to infinity and is radically universal. It supports over 27 technologies and integrates well with other tools within the ecosystem. Plus, the platform supports both hybrid and multi-cloud architecture. Now, this is the component diagram for JFrog platform. The platform comprises of different components which offer different capabilities. 
artifactory. This basically stores and manages all types of artifacts. The next component is X-Ray. This provides continuous security and scanning and license compliance. Followed by distribution. This is an orchestration tool that allows you to package different artifacts into bundles and distribute them into production sites. Then we have edge nodes. These are artifactory proxy caches that are geographically located closer to the production servers or in the cloud where the software is finally deployed. Then we have JFrog pipelines. This is a modern YAML syntax based CI CD solution. It can be used for both continuous integration and continuous delivery. It is a tool which is equivalent to Jenkins. Then we have Mission Control, which is an admin console that ties in all these services together. There is another functionality called as Access Federation, which is part of the platform. This is quite an important feature for distributed DevOps, and I will tell you why exactly it is important in the end of this particular webinar. Increasingly, Software development has moved from the realm of highly localized teams to a collaborative endeavor of large teams at global scale, which means everything is distributed. Servers, offices, hardware, resources, security, etc. And this is not just limited to infrastructure resources. Everyone is also distributed. Developers, managers, teams, ops, etc. And with the current COVID-19 situation, every team member is forced to work from their home. So how do you keep everything in sync when everything is distributed? We understand there is a challenge of getting your software to your different users, different clients, in different time zones, and different production site in a fast and an easy manner. Every company is constantly looking for ways to decrease their lead time. Like I said, the global collaboration now requires an architecture for managing software artifacts and deployable packages that is also global in scale. Managing software artifacts globally involves three key things, locality, reliability, and redundancy. When an organization has development teams across the world, it is very important to make sure that network latency and bandwidth limitations don't harm the development productivity. Hence, all the development needs, such as external and internal dependencies, should exist locally. Locality enhances reliability as it ensures that external network failures do not cause development and deployment activities to halt. Additionally, within a region, you will want critical services to be highly available so that individual hardware faults within a data center will not limit access to the service. So HA is equally important. Reliability is also enhanced by redundancy. Packages which are only generally used in a specific data center may need to be available elsewhere. And this is in the event of that data center becoming suddenly unavailable. So if you see, locality and redundancy together gives you a better reliability. Now, what are the considerations for a multi-site setup? For example, lags connecting to a centralized solutions while reading or writing artifacts, this could be a major consideration. Regional issues and access issues, these could be another one. Limited bandwidth to connect servers to centralized servers, this could be another uh, consideration to look into multi-site setup. And finally, replicating only new changes across sites and not everything 
uh, could be another consideration as well. Artifactory offers unique set of replication capabilities that ensure locality in any network topology and for any development methodology. Replication is the process of syncing repositories in two different artifactory instances set up for teams in different sites. The replication is completely checksum based, which means that only missing binaries which do not have checksums are replicated from a source to a target. Thereby, replication is not hogging all the network bandwidth. The replication can be configured either via UI or using REST API. And since the replication is at a repository level, you are not replicating the entire system. As an admin, you get to choose which exact repositories must be replicated from the source to the target. Now, what are the advantages of replication? Firstly, all developers are working on the same version of artifacts, be it first party libraries or third party dependencies. The build artifacts are shared between the teams efficiently. You can overcome the connectivity issues such as latency, stability, and etc. There are two types of replication supported by Artifactory, push replication and pull replication. A push replication is between two local repositories in Artifactory, say a source repo and a target repo. This replication is always initiated by the source, which makes it a centralized control when replicating to multiple targets. Only after replication is complete, the artifact is available for download at the target. Accessing the artifact before the completion, you will get a 404 error on the target. Pull replication on the other hand is a convenient way to proactively populate a remote repository cache. Meaning that your remote repository on the target server will be proxying a repository on the source server. This replication is always initiated by the target, which makes it, makes it distributed control as multiple targets can pull from same source. Artifacts are available even before synchronization is complete. And this is one of the advantage of pull replication. Hence, you will not get the 404 error when you try to download an artifact from the target. Both push and pull replication support scheduled and event-based replication. Scheduled replication is a cron-based, which runs timely, say every midnight at 12 a.m. If I want to do a replication after work hours to save bandwidth, I can use this particular option. Event-based on the other hand is more of a real-time replication. Whenever an event occurs, such as addition of new artifacts, deletion, or change in the metadata, the replication is automatically triggered. And based on these replication, you can build multi-site topologies such as star and full mesh. A star topology is recommended when you have a main facility doing development, say Amsterdam. However, additional development is managed at multiple remote sites, such as Bangkok, Cape Town, and Denver. All these three sites are read-only sites, which means that my writes are happening in a centralized location. You can either use push-based replication or pull-based replication to implement this topology. This is also referred to as multi-push replication since you are simultaneously pushing changes to multiple sites. A full mesh topology is recommended when development is more equally distributed between different sites, meaning every site is equally producing new content. However, this term is somewhat of a misnomer. A true full mesh topology implies that 
each site would implement a complete bidirectional synchronization, whether by push or by pull. However, this is usually not considered as a best practice. What I mean is, typically if I have two sites, Amsterdam and Bangkok, I will be doing a bidirectional replication between the two repositories in these two sites. And this is not a good practice because you will eventually overwrite each other's artifacts within different region. Instead, what we are recommending is that every local repo within a site will have a corresponding local repo in a different site. Here you can see that Amsterdam has a corresponding local in Bangkok and Bangkok has a corresponding local in Amsterdam. The moment new content is published within the local repo, it gets replicated to the corresponding local repo in a different site. And same thing holds good for Bangkok as well. Both these repositories within a site are put behind a virtual repository. So all I have to do is provide this virtual repository URL to my developers and they can resolve artifacts irrespective of which repository it belongs to. So what we are recommending here in full mesh is actually a start topology, but implemented per project instead of everything centralized. And this is the best way of implementing a full mesh topology. Another way to make sure that network latency and bandwidth limitations don't harm the development productivity or public distribution across the globe is to use Artifactory Cloud with CDN-based caching. Here we are using cloud provider backbone such as AWS CloudFront for CDN caching. Now what are the considerations to adopt this solution? First of all, lag in connecting to a centralized solution. Homegrown solution not meeting the distribution requirement. Need for providing uh, third party dependencies to my development teams who are globally distributed. And of course, need for a rapid and a global uh, distribution solution. These are some of the consideration uh, to go with this particular CDN caching solution. Artifactory with CDN caching reduces download latency, making downloads faster on the cloud. This feature is currently supported on AWS with CloudFront. Many of you here may have customers that are globally distributed and it is important that they have a fast and efficient access to your packages regardless of where they are located. Or your distributed development team may want to download third-party dependencies faster for local development. With our on-prem solution, we already supported direct cloud storage download feature that allows you to redirect download requests from Artifactory directly to your AWS S3 bucket with an option to use AWS CloudFront for CDN capabilities. This was already supported in our on-prem solution. Now we are providing the same solution on the cloud. With CD, the binary is downloaded from the closest cache on AWS CloudFront. This allows Artifactory to operate more efficiently since more compute power can be dedicated to calculating the metadata rather than threads waiting for download requests to be completed. So obviously, Artifactory Cloud with the CDN caching gives you a better performance. Some other functionalities available with this solution are signed URL and geo restrictions. In some scenarios, you may not want to require your customers to authenticate in order to download a file, but still want to control who has access to that particular file. With the signed URL, you will be able to accomplish this capability. You will also be able to specify when these signed URLs will expire. With geo restrictions, 
you can configure a list of countries that have access to your packages. We understand that some of you are subject to export control regulations. With this, you will be able to support these restrictions. Blacklist or whitelist countries that, are, that have access to your data. This can be configured via the MyJFrog application, which is available with your Cloud Artifactory solution. The last solution that I would like to discuss is the distribution of software artifacts via the JFrog distribution. JFrog distribution is a tool that lets you orchestrate software distribution between two artifactory instances or from an artifactory out to multiple artifactory edge nodes. Possible consideration to adopt this solution are a need for a robust delivery system, ability to package multiple artifacts into an immutable bundle, which can be signed and verified, enterprise level distribution tracking to understand where my bundles are being uh, distributed, and of course, caches closer to your production servers so that you can locally pull artifacts from these caches and then deploy them on the production instances. So what are the highlights of this particular solution? With distribution, you can distribute software artifacts from artifactory source to multiple read-only artifactory edge nodes across the globe in one single step. You can distribute artifacts belonging to multiple package types into one coherent bundle along with the metadata. This bundle is referred to as release bundle and they are immutable. Nobody can tamper with these bundles. The bundles are digitally signed using a private GPG key and verified at the target site with the public GPG key. You can also scan a release bundle using JFrog X-Ray and automatically block release bundle distribution based on the JFrog X-Ray scanning results. So if there is a vulnerability found, then the distribution will automatically be blocked. Using distribution tracking, you can trace where your bundles are being distributed. With the right kind of permissions, you can define who can distribute, who can create bundles and distribute them to which edge locations. Distribution uses a proprietary technology to reliably and optimally distribute release bundles to multiple remote locations and update them as new release versions are produced. This proprietary technology is called as replicator. The distribution process also includes artifactory edge node, which act as proxy caches. They are geographically closer to the production sites. They are read-only artifactory servers and cannot be integrated with any CI server or build tools. The write permissions are completely disabled which means that you can trust the binaries that come into these edge nodes. Nobody can overwrite them. Since these edge nodes are artifactory servers, all native clients will work with them. For example, if my edge node consists of a Docker image, then I can use a Docker client to basically do a Docker pull. Finally, both edge nodes and distribution are enterprise ready. You can set them up on-prem or go with the hybrid approach. The distribution service also supports retries. For any reason, if a target edge node is not available, then distribution can retry to distribute the bundles again. The pushes that happen to these edge nodes are also atomic in nature. Partial distribution does not allow you to deploy software artifacts into production. That is completely restricted.
And here are some of the most common use cases with distribution. Distribution of artifacts to retail stores, franchises, branches, ATMs, etc., for software upgrades. So we have a customer who is in the retail industry and he has a need to update the software of his billing system. So in such cases, every store can be treated as an edge node or an edge site and software updates can be distributed to these edge locations. The second use case is distribution of artifacts to customer sites. Uh, this is typically referred to as external distribution because your customers are external to your organization. You can implement an edge node within the customer site or customer network and then basically provide your software updates to these uh, edge locations. The third use case is distribution of artifacts to remote production sites. This is generally re referred as internal distribution. So if your production servers are hosted in East Coast, West Coast, and in Europe, then you can have edge nodes in all these locations and then distribute your software to these edge servers. The fourth use case is distribution of artifacts to different lower level environments, such as QA, staging, prod, pre-prod, et cetera. You can have edge nodes in all of these lower level environments and then distribute only those specific versions that are required in these stages. This is also referred to as internal distribution. The fifth use case is distribution of artifacts across secure networks. Instead of sending all the artifacts to an artifactory instance, which is an air gap, you can only send specific updates to this air gap artifactory instance. Last but not the least, distribution of artifacts for IoT devices for software upgrades. So think of any IoT device, such as uh, uh, cell phones, maybe uh, TV, refrigerators, uh, routers, modems, uh, if you want to do over the air uh, transmission of your software upgrades, this can also be implemented using the edge nodes. So far, we have discussed different ways to keep distributed teams in sync. Our emphasis has been around how to get the artifacts synced across different sites and how to build a robust distribution process, which will overcome the latency and network bottlenecks. Just replicating the data across multiple sites is not sufficient. As a DevOps admin or an engineer, you should also consider providing the same access control across all the sites. Hence, access federation is a key thing in implementing a multi-site setup. So if you remember during the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned that Access Federation is part of the platform and it is key to a distributed DevOps implementation. So what is Access Federation? Access Federation provides a common authentication and authorization platform for all the JFrog services in the platform. An artifactory server connected to an external authentication provider such as LDAP or SSO will be the authentication provider of the entire platform. The permissions for all the services now can be defined at one single place using the unified UI approach. Access Federation also allows you to federate user information such as groups, permissions, API keys, and access token between different artifactory servers in different sites. Access Federation can also be extended to edge nodes. So from an admin perspective, all the user permissions will be centrally managed and the change in permissions will be replicated to the other sites immediately. The admin does not have to recreate the permission on every artifactory server. From an end user perspective, no matter which site they connect to, their permissions, groups, API key, and access tokens will remain the same. This means that a user will not have to manage separate keys for separate servers. Here in the diagram, you can see that I have three artifactory instances, A, B, and C. 
Each of these ID factory instance is connected to uh, an external LDAP for authentication. But once the user authenticates, his permissions are managed within one of the single ID factory instance, and these permissions are federated to all the other servers. So a user can log in, in either into ID factory A or B or C. His permission, or his group, his API keys, and his access tokens will always remain the same which is convenient for both admins and the end user. Now let's quickly switch to uh, the demo. Now I want to show you in action how replication, which is both push and pull replication works, and then show you how distribution works. For the demo, I'll be using the UI since it's easier to demonstrate and understand. But all of this uh, that I show you in the UI can be automated using the REST API as well. So let me quickly switch my screen um, to the UI. Just give me a second. Okay, uh, let me log in. So before I uh, go into the demo, let me explain you how my demo environment is set up. So this is the topology of my demo environment. Um, I have multiple sites. I have a site here in Oregon, which is on the West Coast. I have a site in Amsterdam, Europe. I have a site in Bangkok. And then I have my edge nodes where I will be distributing my production release software uh, in Israel and uh, Australia. Now, I have regular RD factory instances in Amsterdam and uh, Bangkok because these are my read and write sites. Uh, new content is being published in all these three uh, locations. And that's why I cannot have edge nodes in these uh, locations. Uh, and you know that edge nodes uh, have uh, uh, they are read-only servers and the write is disabled. So I need a server, an artifactory server, which supports both read and write here. Now the dotted arrow marks indicate that an active replication is happening between these two sites. So in this case, my artifacts are being replicated from my main site, which is Oregon, uh, to Amsterdam, and similarly from Amsterdam to Bangkok and etc. Now, let me go to uh, the main site here, which is Oregon. Uh, so this is the UI for the uh, Oregon uh, Artifactory instance. So you can see a list of all the repositories that are there uh, within this particular Artifactory server. Similarly, this is my Bangkok uh, Artifactory instance, and these are all the list of the repositories. If I go back to my, uh, you know, my Oregon Artifactory instance, uh, you will see that I have two specific repos here. Uh, I have a source uh, generic local repo which stores generic artifacts. And I have a source Maven repo uh, which is meant for storing uh, Maven artifacts. And if I expand on this particular repo, uh, you will see that I have a, a zip file within this local uh, generic repo. And I have a backend 1.0.0 jar uh, within this Maven repo. So this is my uh, source uh, artifactory instance or a source repo. And Bangkok here will act as my target. And here you can see that I have a target generic local repo, uh, which is basically going to get all the artifacts from the source, uh, which is in Oregon. And then similarly, I have a, a target Maven remote repo, uh, which is actually proxying my uh, source Maven repo uh, in the in the source artifactory instance in Oregon. And if I go back uh, to the admin part, if I go to the repositories, if I uh, go to the remote repo here, click on the remote repo, you can see that I'm proxying uh, the source Maven repo, which is my Oregon instance. And I have configured replication, which is an event-based replication. And here I have a cron uh, job, which is set to uh, once in a day, 
uh, at around uh, 12 uh, noon uh, UTC uh, time standards. And similarly, if I go to my uh, source artifactory in Oregon, and if I go to uh, repositories, uh, and let me search for source. If I go to source generic local repo, uh, go to the replications tab, you can see that I am replicating my artifacts to a target uh, generic local repo. I am syncing my deletes, syncing my properties. Uh, the replication is enabled. Uh, it is event based and I have a similar cron job here as well. So you can see that in the local repo, I'm doing a push based replication. And in the uh, remote repo, I'm basically doing a event based pull replication. Now, if I go back to my source artifactory server, go to the specific repositories. I can upload artifacts here and then I can trigger replication and these artifacts will be available on the target as well. So let's click on this repo, say deploy, select a file. Um, let's simply take a, a, a let's take a, Let's take this particular screenshot. And uh, let me click to deploy. So you can see that I have now two artifacts, the zip and the, and the PNG, the, the, the image file. Now what I can do is I can go back to administration, go to repositories, just to make sure that the replication is triggered. Go to source, artifactory generic local because that's where I deployed the artifacts. Click on run replication. Now go to my target. Go to the artifact repository browser. Go to the artifacts tab. Let me refresh the screen just to make sure that I can see the new artifacts. Click on my target generic local repo and you can see here that my zip file as well as my uh, image is available on the target. So this is basically your push based replication, which is happening between two local repos. Now, similarly, I can go back here. I can go back to my source artifactory, go to artifact repository browser, click on artifacts, go to my, uh, where is my source uh, Maven local repo. What I can do now is I can deploy an artifact here as well. And uh, let me deploy a POM file and uh, deploy. And if I expand this, uh, I have a jar as well as a POM here. Now, if I go back uh, to this repository, again, I'll follow the same procedure, go to my remote repo, uh, search for this uh, source, sorry, go to local, search for my source. This is my Maven repo into which I deployed the POM. Let me, uh, let me enable replication here. Now let me go to the target server. Let me quickly refresh this. Let me expand on this remote repo, which is proxying the local. So you can see that I have both the jar and the POM. And if I expand my cache, you can see that this jar file. Now let me enable this event-based uh, replication. So for that, let me go to admin, repository, go to remote. This is my repo, let me enable it. Go back to admin. Go back to Artifact Browser. Now expand on the cache. You will see both the jar and the pom. So this is your event-based uh, pull replication where I pulled both the jar and the pom from my uh, source artifactory repository. 
So this is how the typical replication works. Now let me go back to distribution and let me go back to topology here. Now, like I said, my main site is uh, uh, Oregon and my edge nodes are here in Israel and Sydney. So what I'm going to do is, I'm basically going to distribute my production ready software from uh, say, uh, from a main uh, you know, uh, site, which is Oregon uh, to these edge locations. So if I click on the distribution, I can see a list of all the release bundles created here. I can create a new bundle if I want, or I can go to an existing bundle. And what I can do is I can click on this particular version. And then what I can do is I can clone this version. So I'm just creating a, a clone of this particular release bundle. And what I will do is I will change or increment the version to uh, V1055. Now, when creating a release bundle, you basically need to write a spec and the spec will decide what kind of artifacts you want to create as part of the bundle and then distribute them to the edge locations. So here I have a query, uh, which is basically looking into my Docker uh, production uh, local repos. And then basically I'm creating a bundle out of this. If I click on the next, um, I will be able to uh, see the preview of all those artifacts that are available as part of the bundle. Uh, let's just give it a second to load. In case it doesn't, I will uh, click on next uh, so that we can create the bundle and send it. Um, let's give it a second more. Okay. So here you can see that it has uh, two Docker images and uh, all the layers are listed here. I can click on next. Uh, I can add additional properties or if I wanna do any path mappings, I can do the same. I can uh, click on save and uh, my bundle is ready here. So I have two options, create, create and sign. If I click on create, uh, this bundle will get created. And uh, let me show you the status of the bundle. Uh, let's just give it a second. For some reason, the demo environment seems to be a little slower. I think that's the uh, fun part of giving live demos. Um, so let's just give it a second. Okay. So my version 1055 bundle is created. You can see that the state is not signed because I just created the bundle and the status is definitely not distributed. Now, since it is not signed, I can again go back and edit this particular version. And now I can click on save and sign and you can see that it throws you a warning saying that once the bundle is signed, you cannot modify this bundle. And this is the place where the bundle is signed using the GPG keys, uh, using the private GPG keys. Let's give it a second uh, to save. So the same, uh, so now that we have signed the bundle with the private key, so we will use the public key on the edge node to validate that the same release bundle is received on the edge or not. So now you can see that the state changed to ready and you can see a lock symbol which says it's signed. Uh, but it is still not distributed. Now what I can do is I can go to version uh, actions and then I can click on distribute version. Um, I will select my edge node where I want to distribute my bundle and then I will click on distribute. So this automatically takes you to distribution tracking. Um, you can see that uh, it was in pending state and immediately it changed to completed. 100% artifacts are uh, uh, distributed and the distribution is complete. And if you click on it, it gives you a status message which says distribution is complete. Now, if I go to one of these edge nodes, then I will be able to see those artifacts that are distributed. And uh, let me log in. 
So you can see that uh, it took me to the distribution tab. So version V1055 has been received. Uh, there are different artifacts here. There are two Docker images. You can see the manifest JSON and there are all different layers. Now, I can go to this artifactory edge, click on artifacts uh, tab, and here I can go to Docker prod local repo and uh, basically I can, we can see what artifacts we distributed. So uh, we basically distributed a pipeline app demo uh, tag 85. So let's go to edge pipeline app demo and tag 85. So you can see that within your artifactory edge. And now what I can do is I can use the set me up functionality and basically use a Docker client to pull this particular Docker image. Uh, so like I said, all native clients work with this artifactory edge nodes and you can use them to pull the software. And see, since this edge nodes are locally, um, like are they are local to the production servers, the production servers can pull the software from these edge nodes and you can basically deploy them there. So this is how the distribution process works. Uh, let's go back uh, to the side deck uh, as this completes the, uh, the demonstration. Okay. Now this completes the webinar. I hope this was informative. Uh, let's take a few minutes uh, for the Q&A. Uh, please post your questions uh, on the Q&A tab and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Uh, looks like there are a couple of questions here. The first question is, how much time does it take to replicate large artifacts from one artifactory to another? Um, to be honest, it depends upon the network bandwidth between the two artifactory instances and also the size of the artifact. In an ideal situation uh, with a good network bandwidth, the replication is instantaneous and should take only a few tens of seconds to complete. Um, also smaller artifacts replicate faster than larger artifacts, right? And the replication is an asynchronous operation, right? The moment you upload something into artifactory, if it's an event-based replication, automatically the event will be triggered and the artifact will be made available on the target. Uh, I hope this answered the question. Um, the next question I have here is, what is the difference between replication and replicator? Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, so why do, uh, like, what is the difference between uh, the distribution process and the replication process, right? Uh, replication is to basically uh, sync repositories between two artifactory servers, right? The entire source repo is replicated to the target repo. Uh, replication is HTTPS based and it's a single threaded uh, operation uh, per repo. Whereas replicator is a proprietary implementation within the distribution process. And this allows you to distribute uh, specific release bundles uh, to the target edge nodes. And this release bundle can comprise of different artifacts as we have discussed. Replicator also uses HTTPS uh, to distribute the artifacts but it is multi-threaded. Um, it uses eight different threads for concurrency. Also as part of distribution, uh, the goal is to distribute only specific production versions of binaries to the edge node and not the entire repo. And I think this is the biggest difference between uh, a distribution process and the replication process. In replication, you either replicate the entire repo or nothing. Whereas in distribution, you hand pick your production ready artifacts and distribute them to the edge nodes. Distribution solution is more suited uh, when there is a high network latency between the source and the edge nodes. Uh, I think that's the best uh, use case for using the distribution. Uh, I hope this answered the question uh, as well. Um, please feel free to ask any other questions. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. 